It's finding a um, kind of shared humanity in very diverse objects that fascinates me because I'm primarily a photographer of objects rather than people. There's a transition from object to subject and I'm, I'm not an animist but well, sometimes I feel like I am when I'm working. It's just teasing that uh, the humanity out, the history and uh, kind of bringing it into the, the time we're in and making it relevant. So that's something that I really wanted to bring to the to the residency. I've tried to bring the viewer to a point uh, of sh a shared vision, like me and they're with me looking, and it's a kind of radiant point, I suppose, of insight because um, it doesn't matter what, what century people are in, we're all basically the same. And that's something that's important, I think, to the Key Bronley. Mm -hmm. And it's certainly something that's um, always been relevant to me in my practice. So I was in a great position having just started working um, at the Musée de l'Homme and having a very successful show at the Biennale in Sydney. I was very excited about what I discovered about how these uh, images were touching people and what kind of contentious issues there were, what kind of emotional issues, how the photography seemed to straddle that kind of um, abyss between, you know, that's between here and then in history. So uh, the residency was a great opportunity to just grab the bull by the horns and just get in there and bring in more, even more diverse objects, ones that weren't anthropological, that want, weren't an anthropomorphic. Um, more diverse uh, kind of left field things like mushrooms, you know, French mushrooms. Uh, so that was fun. So I wanted to kind of bring that kind of levity in, you know, that idea of um, the radiant point where we can all get together and communication flows. had uh, a kind of knowledge, a background knowledge and lots and lots of images in my head already that I knew were here. It just happened that the residency offered me the opportunity to uh, actually go in and search out those objects and then to see the, try to get them back alive, to reinvest them with some type of numinous quality, spiritual quality. Well actually maybe it's, all, it's always there but it's a matter of how to get it to come out because it would be wrong for me to think that somehow I was like donating or giving them um, a, a power that, that initially was one that uh, enveloped them in their previous lifetimes, you know, in the communities that actually generated them. That light is extremely important and it's the it's something that's uh, important to me from a kind of literary point of view and a theoretical point of view as well. But just from the simple fact that um, as a photographer I'm dealing with uh, light. How light equals life, really, I suppose. And there's just always a point in time when I'm taking the photographs when the images just seem to leap back into life again. So it's the matter of me trying to negotiate all of the kind of technical issues and have a feel like that animist feel I was talking about initially. I suppose it's just the experience. I've been photographing for about 30 years now that I feel like I'm getting close to, um, uh, you know, that, that lovely feeling where everything just flows in my practice. And uh, I think that the work that I've done for this residency has been a really big step forward for me. Uh, I, I've been very happy with the light. It's very beautiful, very um, diffuse. It's, they've got big bits of frosted glass uh, between the, um, oh, just in front of the LED panels. I'm very happy with it. It's a really good setup, and just it just goes to prove that, you know, um, it, you can have very beautiful, uh, expensive lighting, but almost anything will do if you set set your mind to it. If you're prepared, then you can recognise something. 
uh, that's going to be you know very deeply significant to you. I think that uh, the f the kind of diverse objects that I bring together, it's a kind of poetical fris frisson, you know. You just get a feeling from arrangements and these different arrangements of objects. When they start speaking to each other, they're, they're going to say very unusual, th <laughs> unusual things, but also very, very you know things that are just like at the same time common sense or very you know compassionate or things you know you can find between very diverse objects like mushrooms and um, casts of small children that died. I mean, there's all sorts of resonances. Some will be, you know, like the basic ones to do with forms looking similar or resonances of light or textures. The different resonances just get deeper and deeper and deeper and then you're just trying to pare it down to a shared humanity. For me, it was like looking at Dumont de Ville's son and then looking at uh, uh, the one of the hospitals, um, the Kremlin Bicep Hospital. Kremlin yes, yes, and they had some... Uh, death casts of small children that Dr. Bourneville worked with, uh, who was he was a uh, worked a lot with Charcot, didn't he? And so uh, you tease out all of these really unusual connections between objects and the way they functioned in society. Um, so I look at so Jules Deville, I look at these children, I looked at um, photographs of uh, you know of other children that I haven't brought in because they were too difficult to get in, but you suddenly feel all these connections and I suppose that's my imagination but at the same time because it is and I'm an artist then it's as real as the next thing. If you take a photograph of something then it's real. I just like the simple things like with the mushrooms, I mean you know the French are really into their mushrooms, the, you know there's, it's fantastic <laughs> and, uh, and that's what I like about the French, they're kind of so involved in, in the things that they do as for like eating, it's just like a big you know, there's this enormous edifice. I love eating mushrooms too, and I like eating the mushrooms in France. But uh, I like the fact that the casts uh, that were taken in the 1800s, uh, it looked like somebody just like got a spade, dug a little section of the earth out that was in the 1830s, and then just transported it into the present time. It's like uh, some type of um, uh, time travel people to think about the, the, just the, the simpleness uh, of those photographs, uh, sorry, those, those casts, uh, the, the just the, the thisness of it, you know, the just there, the, the being of it. Because that, uh, it doesn't matter if it's a king or a beautiful um, statue of a lady from like the Carnival um, statue of um, the young actress. I mean, in that sense, the thisness of the objects and the relationship between the casts and pastime and the present, uh, it doesn't really matter what the objects are at all. It's that connection that's important. Photography was something when I was a student that you did if you couldn't paint, you know, so it was always a Cinderella medium. It was always, you know, it was always sitting in the ashes, you know, by the fire. It wasn't upstairs in the beautiful palace. That's where the paintings were. That's what I very much liked about um, casts, is that they were pre-photographic, to me at least, a pre-photographic form of photography. They were these fantastic um, objects that allowed an enormous amount of information to be transmitted across distances. So to me, I... Uh, I liked the mixing up, you know, the way that the, 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 the everything uh, with likeness, photographic likeness, physical likeness, um, with copies and casts, facsimiles, you know, they're all muddying the ground between, or, you know, between what is real, what is valuable, what is precious or primary, you know, and what is lower. Um, you know, which is only a kind of a reflection or a, uh, a shadow of, you know, real artistic, you know, content or prestige. Yes, I like very much working those metaphors as much as I can because they're very, uh, they're very deep and there's, there's a, you know, there's a lot of meat in it. It's, you, they're, they're not kind of, it's not a subject matter that you can very easily exhaust. I was just absolutely amazed when I realised the enormous collections in, in um, France at the museums of all of these objects, you know, which were casts of, of people, so they were, they were things that stood in for something else. And of course that brings in 
all of that idea of which is the copy, which is the cast, which is the metaphor, you know, where, where does it end? And these days, of course, nobody's, uh, people are honest, more honest about it and they don't really know. So for me, yeah, I think that linking that back to uh, the Māori and the colonisers, you know, which were mostly English, some French in New Zealand, um, I really like that idea of uh, bringing the Métis in too, you know, like the young girl Marika. So here we have, um, you know, the, a, an embodiment of that colonial interface. I mean, she is the interface. So, and that's the, the ca case in New Zealand for most people. I mean, in my family, there's um, uh, Irish, Scottish, Maori, uh, some English, maybe a bit of French on my mum's si uh, mother's side. Uh, everybody just got mixed up. So where is the purity of the idea, and where is the purity in the in in you know the body of of a person? Uh, I mean, I don't know, and I think it can be almost anywhere, and you know, and that's why I like photographing objects because you can make them alive. You can, the, uh, you know, they can inhabit all sorts of things. You know, ideas, spirits, um, passions, you know, political histories. I think I do really love the casts because they are so, uh, they ha they're just buoyed up by enormous amounts of um, ideas and history that are very relative uh, and rele rele relevant to us now. You know, I was a black and white photographer and that's, that's how I understood the world and that was the, the privileged way of seeing for me. You know, things change, everything changes, there's less black and white papers, the kind of film I liked stopped being made and I slowly made that transition over. And this was the perfect opportunity for, uh, to pl put it in place in my work. So it was a bit of a risk, uh, but it was very exciting. And in, in the end, like anything else, it just seems to be natural. I like triptychs. I used to work with them a lot when I was a student. Uh, now I've got the kind of um, subject matter, which makes it really easy to uh, have very complicated themes and, um, I've gone back to the black background, which I prefer, for uh, the reason that it took me a while to work out how to transmit that across into other media. I th thought it was most important for this uh, so complicated uh, kind of groupings of images. We needed an imaginative space that didn't, uh, that allowed the images the freedom to be what they were going to be in relation with each other. So for me, that imaginative space was a very important part of. Um, yeah, the the setting of uh, of con conversations between the objects. Um, I've re I really like colour, and it, it's it's such a powerful thing. It's I wanted to deal with it very slowly. I've so I've used very muted I think muted colours, but uh, not realistic colours either. And initially, it was because I was having a struggle with how to. Um, how to make colour work for me um, because I didn't understand a lot of the technical kind of basis of how to keep colour, um, you know, like a re relative across all different types of uh, images and places I've been photographing. But then I discovered that um, they were just another kind of poetic uh, method for me and so I started, exper you know, experimenting and using unusual colours or because like in your imagination if you play back things, uh, that you know, almost anything can happen. So I've, so I think I've, I'm really enjoying colour rather than it being a problem. It's turned into a, into a, a lot of fun. I've got um, a lot of exhibitions set up uh, ahead with my dealers. Uh, I've got um, a travelling exhibition and book being published, and then wait to see what happens next because I've got so much information in my head. And I've seen so many things on this uh, journey, and um, this time that I've looked through the museums, there's so many other things that I've seen that I just need a chance to go back to New Zealand, go back to Waiheke Island, and then see what comes out in my mind. I feel really good about working in colour and making those type of very painterly, large, you know, scale, large format images. So I think whatever they are, they're going to be colour and they're going to be quite big. And uh, yeah, I think triptychs are good fun, so that's where I'm going.